All right, it's a little later in the evening here since our last video. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite, wilhitewx.com. Um, data has rolled in, and it's still rolling in at some point, but I feel confident enough to at least issue a snowfall forecast, a first call map. This is not going to be a huge system on on, uh, on on Saturday night, but there's it can be... Uh, we can get a little bit out of this. Now, there is a bigger system coming up possibly next Tuesday. I want to discuss that briefly just a little bit tonight, too, but one thing at a time. Let's get there. First off, here is the latest high-res NAM that rolled in about an hour ago. And you can see by the time we get to uh, tomorrow afternoon, really not much going on around the area. It's going to be more uh, along the lines of tomorrow evening before you start to see those Showers break out through the area, and yes, it will likely start as rain. We're going to warm to the 40s tomorrow uh, over a good chunk of the area here in southern Indiana and into Kentucky. And so that'll, that'll leave it warm enough for it to be mostly rain. But you will start to see those pockets of snow sort of mix in here with it every once in a while. And as I put the loop into time, you can see as you get into the overnight hours, this is about 1 a.m. Well, that's when you're really starting to see you know, this transition to uh, snow, and you'll watch it sort of start to overtake uh, most of the area here then after that, uh, as you put it forward in time. Uh, then, you know, by the time you get to about 7 a.m. Eastern time here on Sunday morning, uh, again, you've got some light snow still over much of the area. You might possibly be mixing back in with some rain, that rain snow line is going to move back and forth just a little bit as we start to warm up a, uh, a little bit on Sunday. We're going to stay above freezing for the duration of the, this event for most of us until we get into uh, late uh, that evening when the Arctic front comes through. But we clear out that morning as it pushes off to the east. You notice there's some more precipitation coming here. That's the Arctic front moving in. The latest high-res data suggests that some snow goes a little bit towards the north of it of us here from say Indianapolis, uh, Bloomington and, and points on towards the north. Doesn't really have a whole lot for us uh, down here uh, that would angle here into southern Indiana and to Kentucky where I primarily forecast for here for, uh, but uh, we'll see whether that fills in. Uh, remember how how the data handled yesterday's snow, Thursday's snow. Uh, for days it had said yes it's going to snow and it's going to snow and that's that. And then once it got closer to the time within three or four days in there, it said, no, nah, it's going to be entirely rain. And then it was not until high res data actually picked it up uh, the day of the event that it's like, oh, hey, it's going to snow. And, and so we had some uh, data suggesting grassy accumulations, which we did get. But the high res data was the first was really the only ones that picked up on that. And it didn't happen until within about 12 hours of the event. So. What I'm saying here is I wonder if tomorrow morning's data may pick up on some things that we're not seeing tonight. Unfortunately, the model performance is just not that great, as illustrated by what we've seen back on Thursday. And so I think this could be maybe just a little bit more of an overachiever than what it is saying right now. I don't think this is going to be a big system. Uh, with it being uh, warm enough, it's going to be mainly grassy accumulations, elevated surfaces, cars, things like that. But treated roadways should be just fine out of this. In fact, a lot of untreated roadways may be pretty decent out of this as well by virtue of the fact that road temps won't be below freezing by that point. Now, again, uh, once the Arctic front moves through, well, that will be a, a different temp, different, uh, different story. Let me just go ahead and load the temperatures here for, for you and you can kind of uh, see this. And so, uh, we're cold tonight, but watch how we warm up very quickly tomorrow by uh, 18Z. That's 1 Eastern in the afternoon. We're already into the mid to upper 30s across the area. And, you know, we warm up to the low 40s over a good chunk of uh, of uh, Kentucky and southern Indiana here. And then uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, as you get into the evening time, uh, you're still above freezing here. And watch this, even during the overnight hours. Uh, most of us are still above freezing and even during the highlight of this, you know, 33, 34 degrees over the area. So you're close to freezing, but you're still just above it. And again, uh, there you go on Sunday after this is all past, you're starting to warm back up to the mid 30s. Here you're pretty close to 40 by uh, that afternoon again, but watch this Arctic front plow in uh, and you can see it right and you can just see that front moving fast through here. So you go from 39 in Evansville here at 1 in the afternoon on Sunday to 32 uh, just a, a couple of hours, three hours later there in time. Uh, so, you know, uh, 
you know, uh, 30, uh, 39 to 32 from one to four there. That's a pretty fast moving front. And as it plows through, you can just watch how quickly these temperatures plummet. And so if we do get that second wave uh, coming through with that, absolutely, there will be some sticking snow with that. But again, there's a question mark with that. Now, the uh, regular NAM, the lower res counterpart here, uh, the parent counterpart has pretty much a similar thing. Uh, there is it, it broad brushes things, whereas the high res NAM is a little bit more finer detailed. Uh, but you get the same idea here. Rain changes to snow during the overnight hours. It's a pretty decent snow for many. Then that's pretty much gone early on Sunday morning. And, and that wave on Sunday afternoon, evening really affects us more towards the northern part of Indiana and doesn't bring anything else in. Again, will that pick up on that idea and see that in tomorrow's runs once we get into the higher resolution data, specifically the HER model, which is only an 18-hour model? That's what really started to pick up on things Thursday. I think that's a possibility. We'll just have to see there with that. Let's talk about snow accumulations and what we could get with this really quickly. Well, if you're looking at the high res data here, you can see, again, you, if you want a decent snow, you're going to have to go up towards the north. You can get some lake effect snow going on up towards here. But for most of us, you know, an inch or two by the time you get north of Bloomington and possibly some spots even there close to three inches. Most of us down here in southern Indiana and, you know, there might be an occasional two inch spot, but most of us going to be more on the order of an inch or less out of this. And so the, the uh, regular NAM, the low res, again, broad brushes it a little bit more, but you get kind of this for it. Really quickly here, uh, the GFS is uh, suggesting pretty much about the same thing. There you go on to the early overnight hours and you're still uh, with rain, but it changes over to snow. It has that rain snow line a little bit further to the north on the GFS. So again, there are some details still here to work out in here. Uh, and then you see there is that wave that would hit us, but watch how uh, the Arctic high pressure just sort of comes down and squashes that out and dry air just sort of takes over and it's gone. So again, we'll see whether that's really a trend uh, with this or not. Here's what I'm going with as far as my forecast, my uh, first call snowcast, and this will take us through the duration of the event. Uh, from Saturday night all the way through what might come Sunday night. In general, for most of you down here in southern Indiana, you're looking at a light coating, maybe up to two inches, but I think it's going to be a coating to an inch for most of us. Certainly less than an inch as you head a little bit towards the south of that, and then by the time you're getting closer to Bowling Green, Paducah, it's just going to be mostly rain down there. And again, you might get some one to three inch spots as you get a little bit north of Bloomington up towards Indianapolis, where those things will be a little higher. Uh, uh, and where it won't be nearly as much rain. It'll be mostly snow there. So again, your timeline, rain changes to snow late on Saturday night, grassy accumulations, accumulations on cars, elevated services, likely by Sunday morning. And then we may or may not get that second wave in, but if we do get that second wave in on Sunday night, you can expect a little bit more light accumulations with this. But in general, we're not looking at a very potent system out of this, just a, a winter threat level uh, of one, just kind of a nuisance threat there, if you will. Now, really quickly, let me shift gears just to talk a little bit about next week. We've got an active pattern coming up. And so on Tuesday, we've got a little bit more uh, rain and snow. And unfortunately, it looks to me like that rain snow line is probably going to fight us right in the area again. On Monday, we'll have high pressure sort of in the area. So we'll have a very nice day on Monday. A little bit on the cooler side with that northwest uh, wind sort of flowing in here over the area. But as that moves out of the way, watch this storm system starting to eject out of here. And it's going to have two components. It's going to have a northern stream component, which is, uh, you know, this, this clipper feature. But then there's another low that's developing down here that's going to bring some uh, precipitation into this later. And the big question now is, can you really get these uh, these two phasing up or not? You know, uh, so you've got what happens here is you've got a northern feature of the jet stream coming in. And then you've got a southern feature down here that's going to come in. And can you marry those up for a big snowstorm right over the Ohio Valley? Well, uh, the data wants to hint that it can. But again, we're a few days out now. And what happens is inevitably all winter long, it's been like this, where it suggests that we're going to marry these two branches of the jet stream up, phase into a pretty decent system. And then about two or three days before this, it's like, no, nah, just just joshing you. It isn't going to happen. It ends up just being clipper stream energy and a very minor snow. That's what's happened pretty much this entire winter so far. So uh, I wouldn't get too excited yet about a big snow, even though the modeling is suggesting it. We're going to not we're going to hold off on that right now because I'm still very skeptical of this. But watch how the latest GS GFS does take it. There's the clipper uh, system moving in and you can see really it's going to affect uh, places here like, oh, say uh, Bloomington and on northward here uh, with that uh, and, and 
not a whole lot south of that. But then there's that low starting to form and eject up our way. And you can see that rain snow line is cut right over southern Indiana. And I, I if, if it comes to a phase system, I absolutely think that's reasonable. We unfortunately face that regularly around here. Uh, and so we could end up seeing uh, uh, some rain. We could end up seeing some snow. It's a little too far out to know uh, at this point what we would get for whoever gets this snow. If it does end up being a phase system, it could be a pretty potent one. Which is what the GFS has right now. And again, take this with an extreme grain of salt because I'm not trusting it one bit at all. But it just illustrates for you as we look at 24-hour precipitation totals for this event as you go through. Uh, the snow mainly stays towards the north here, but watch this and you're seeing some pretty impressive totals as you run through these. Uh, you know, this is 24-hour intervals as I'm going through here. But you're talking about a phase jet stream with a nice deformation band of snow, as we call it. And this is pretty much to the north of India, and it just hammers uh, that with some snow. Now, what would happen if that low uh, and that northern stream do phase up just a little bit, but instead of being up here, the low is more like here than shift everything down to the south, and all of a sudden, southern Indiana and northern Kentucky is into that uh, risk for some heavier snow. So the track is by no means set in stone yet. Uh, I would bank more on this track than I would the thing moving to the south. Uh, we don't have very much blocking going on up in Greenland, and so you're not going to necessarily have that northward uh, track out of it where the jet stream's kind of buckling and you're forcing it to kind of eventually go up and around. Uh, and with it uh, being a pretty weak low, this is a 10-11 low pressure, that's a pretty weak low. Uh, it's probably not going to want to go poleward unless it's a deeper low. Uh, so, I, you know, I think it's going to be, uh, I think this is a pretty reasonable track for it not the final track it's not set in stone but i just have a gut feeling with this one that we're probably going to fight that rain snow line here in the area somewhere again we're going to have to monitor that that you know that could bring us some snow that could just be 33 and cold rain here uh, for much of kentucky and southern indiana uh, that's the way it looks right now unfortunately but uh, and then there's also the real possibility of what happens uh here could uh, happen could be what happened all winter long in that uh, what happens is the southern energy sort of outraces it and the clipper system doesn't catch up in time or vice versa. It's happened both ways this winter. Uh, and so they never marry and then this could be entirely wrong and what we get end up with it is maybe just some light snow again and with it being just the northern stream I would bank on that light snow being uh, kind of more up in this direction than uh, I would down in here uh, just by the angle of where this is coming in. So that's something that we are going to have to watch. And then, of course, behind that, we've got more systems coming in. You see uh, another bigger system starting to dive down here that could affect us as we get later on in the week here as well. The uh, zero Z run is not entirely in for that yet. So let me just sort of uh, shifted down here to the 12Z and, and show you that there there was more uh, snow that came in at the end of next week for us as well and so it's and then uh, more systems after that it's just one right after another uh, in a row here so we've got a lot to track over coming days but bottom line for the very first uh, part of it here is we've got some light snow that could affect us beginning in the overnight hours tomorrow night and again you know a coating to a couple of inches over a good chunk of the area of grassy accumulations certainly I'll have more details on this tomorrow, and uh, that's it for now, folks. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite here. Uh, wow, those are old snowcasts. Ignore those. Uh, sorry about that. All of my snowcasts are in the same folder and hitting the wrong button and starting to go through. But there is your current one. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite, Southern Indiana Weather, Lower Ohio Valley Weather, WilhiteWX.com. Uh, keep it tuned here for more coverage.